Welcome everybody to the next proposition. We have Euclid's proposition 6 that says, given a triangle with two congruent angles, the sides which subtend the equal angles will also be equal to one another. That is, the triangle itself will be isosceles. Now let's take a look and see how we can demonstrate that this is going to be true. So let's suppose that we have a triangle and we'll make this triangle that point A, that point B, and that point C. Now furthermore, what we're told at the beginning is that two of the angles are going to be congruent. So we assume that angle CBA is going to be congruent to angle ACB. So we have this angle congruent to this angle as part of our given assumption. Now we want to show that sides AB and AC are going to be congruent. And so as part of our proof by contradiction, we want to suppose that just the opposite is going to be true. So we want to suppose that segment AB is not going to be congruent to segment AC. Well, if they're not the same size, then it means that one of them has to be bigger than the other. And so without loss of generality, we can assume that segment AB is going to be the longer one, and so AB is longer than AC. Now, by proposition 3, we showed that because AB is longer, that we can subdivide segment AB at a point D, say here, so that our segment BD is going to be congruent to our segment AC. And so we'll know that this side is going to be congruent to this side. And so an important part of what's going to be our contradiction is to note that because BD is going to be the same length as our shorter line segment, that it's impossible for D to get all the way up to point A. And so we have that D cannot be equal to our point A. They couldn't coincide. So the two triangles that we'll be looking at, one of them will be our triangle D, B, C, and then the kind of our original triangle that we had there that was going to be A, B, and C. Now based on what we know, we've said that segment BD is going to be congruent to our segment AC. And because they are the same side, we actually have segment BC congruent to itself in both triangles. And what we have from our initial hypothesis was that our angle ACB was going to be congruent to our angle CBD, which is the same as our angle CBA. And so we can see from the picture that we have here that our triangle BCD is going to be congruent to our triangle ABC by our side angle side congruence property. And that was our property, our proposition 5. Now in particular what this means is that our third sides then have to be congruent. And it means that our corresponding angles have to be congruent. And so in particular, the angles between sides 2 and 3 are also going to be congruent. So that we have this angle congruent to this angle. And so our angle DCB is going to be congruent to our angle CBA. Now let's see what the implication is back in our original picture. Now from our hypothesis, we were given that angle CBA was going to be congruent to angle ACB. And we just showed that our angle DCB was going to be congruent to our angle CBA. Now from our picture, we can see that our angle ACD is going to be congruent, there's going to be equal to our larger angle ACB and if we take away that smaller angle DCB. But this is going to be congruent to angle ACB minus our angle CBA. 
And this was because our, or what we showed, that angle CBA was congruent to angle DCB. And this follows by our common notion 3. And so this will also be congruent to our angle ACB minus, again, our angle ACB because up here by our common notion 3, we said that CBA and ACB were exactly the same, that they were going to be congruent. And so what we end up with is that our angle ACD is just going to be congruent to is a zero angle. It's not really an angle. It's going to be something we might call a degenerate angle. And so because it is just going to be the zero angle, we have to conclude then that our point D has to be equal to our point A. Otherwise, we would have an angle there. But we said before, when we were assuming that AB was not going to be congruent to AC, that this meant that D could not be the same as A. And so we have a contradiction. We have that they are equal and they are not equal. And so what this means is that our original assumption that AB not being congruent to AC has to be wrong. So therefore, it has to be the case that our line segment AB is congruent to our line segment AC, and so our triangle ABC is isosceles, as was to be demonstrated.